Hi, in this quick video, I'm going to introduce some of the basic things I've learned from using the Kibana uh, graphical kind of desktop dashboard environment that's built on top of Elasticsearch. So we've loaded a bunch of log files in here, and I've got um, some uh, mainly Windows event logs, uh, Windows process monitoring logs, and Windows performance monitoring logs. And um, you can access little different components of this relatively easily. I learned a few little tricks um, over the course of a week playing with this product and just thought I'd put it out there to show you so you can get a quick start as well. For example, let's get started here. Um, I've opened up a blank dashboard. You got to add a row first. Um, a row to the dashboard is just part of the user interface. I'm going to make a row and I'm going to call it table. And that's all I'm going to do. But then I add to that row um, one of these panel widgets. I'm going to add a table. And um, I can change all these different settings. Uh, the span setting is for the width. And so here we've got this new panel showing up in our dashboard, full width, and showing actual the raw details of the information that's stored in the in the log files. So in this case, if you're coming from a relational database standpoint, I've got uh, what they call an index, which is kind of an uh, analogy for a table, or for a database, I mean. So, for example, I can say, show me all the records, show me all the index that's used for each record. And I just call them Windows Logs. And then you can have what are called types. And they're like a subset, so they're like tables. So in this case, I actually have three different types of, three different types of uh, data in, uh, in Kibana, or in Elasticsearch, really, in the back end. And um, let me just go through, and I will show you a quick way to check what kinds of things you've got. Um, so there's two types showing up in this. Um, this is kind of the metadata type that Kibana uses behind the scenes. I'm going to use the type that I had already pre-computed in my data. And it says, oh, in the first kind of 500 records, there's only one uh, type. But if you dig into it and you say, show me an analysis of all the types in the whole data set, you'll get this, you can get this little bar graph or a table. And you'll see um, I've got performance monitoring, process monitoring, and event logs. So this shows a count of all the records of each. And if you, again, you're coming from the relational world, it's, think of it as three tables, kind of all union together. In some cases, there will be certain attributes in some columns, and in other parts, there won't be. Now, across all my data sets, I have uh, some common fields, including this uh, has time timestamp. So I can actually do timestamp, in, including counts, across all my tables all at once. And I'll show you how I do that right now. So first, I'm going to add another uh, another row to this dashboard. I'm going to go to the dashboard settings, add a row. Um, the charts, create the row, and then I'm going to put the charts at the top. So we have the table underneath. And um, I just usually add the table thing first so I can get a preview of some of the data that I'm doing. And I can turn on different fields and see what values are in there, see if they're numeric, see if they're text, et cetera. And you can click on a record and get the raw details, including kind of um, feel for what the raw data that was fed into this looks like after it's been parsed out. And then, of course, you've got um, the ability to get given different kinds of analysis. And from this kind of they call microanalysis view. You can actually build your queries and filters to say don't show these or show these as a separate category um, in the queries at the top. But I'm not going to show you that now because that's uh, for another time. So these are our basic records. I've created a new row to put our chart in. I'm going to put in a histogram. Make it wide. And one thing I want to change here is my time field is a custom named time field. And we're just going to do a count of all the records. So I've been collecting data for last week. And actually, um, it says it goes into 2015. That's wrong. But the, what, the reason they're doing that is it's a summary for a one-year span of the data. I don't have a one-year span. I have one week's worth of data, or a little more. You'll see here what I've done is I've switched the interval to the sampling interval to group everything and count and give me an aggregate total for one week. So this week I have you know a third of the records that I collected last week. But if we break it down by day, you can see how many records of all of these log files combined together I have for each day of the week. 
um, and then I can actually break it down into smaller bits. And some of this data is actually collected on a one second interval. So if I wanted to see you know, uh, dramatic changes in that data, I, I would have to just zoom in further and further to start to see the finer and finer detail. Of course, some stuff is only collected every five minutes or 15 minutes, and you'll start to see that those things spike and then disappear, spike and disappear. Um, this is 30 minutes, let's do a five minute interval. But for the most part, this data is actually collected fairly regularly. I hope you don't see these artifacts from VNC sticking on the screen. But anyway, that's not Kibana, that's just the recording environment here. So um, obviously, too, you can zoom in to a time range on here just by clicking and dragging. And you'll see that that adds a filter that based on that time uh, start and end point. So here you can see I've got five minute, every bar on here represents five minutes. You can see that there's some data that's only collected um, you know, every half an hour or something like that. Or, or that's reported that, that regularly. So you can dig in and see the stuff. But now, um, one of the features that I didn't realize was possible, well, I should back up and say, if I wanted to say color code this differently and say, show me performance mo monitoring logs as one series on here, I could actually add another series, say uh, process monitoring logs, and it will put it in as a different color into, into the chart. Here's the event logs. All oh, the processing monitoring logs are so small that they don't really show up graphically, um, at least at this point. And also, I'm going to get rid of the time filter. Um, I didn't enable process monitoring until later in the week, so you can start to see that. Now, you could go through and identify each one of these, but what if you didn't know what they were in the first place that you wanted to see? Well, you, you go and you do your little meta analysis down here and say, show me all the types. But you can, there's one other way to do this as well that I hadn't, hadn't read about. And I'll just erase all this. Turn it back so it's just giving me all my records just by putting a star in. And then you click on the symbol here and you can switch from doing a Lucene search to doing what they call a top N uh, analysis. So I'm going to change this to my type field. And I'll say, give me the top five types. And it'll actually do the classification for you. You don't have a lot of control over colors, seemingly but you can get um, an automated response really quick. I can go change the color scheme a little bit. I can't seem to change uh, the, the small ones here as needed, but you'll get the idea. So that's um, a quick kind of the top end search stuff, how to manually build uh, multiple um, queries to appear as different series on this chart. And you can get more and more complex and you can start to add in um, filters, or you can even do it in your query. You can say, show me where, say, pr processor um, percent time is greater than 50%, and it will filter out those logs, and or it'll show those as a specific kind of series on the uh, chart. You can add another one that says, I want to see how many records report that processor percent time is, whoa, VNC is going crazy again is greater than 80%. Let's see this is less than or equal to 80. And you'll see it starts to stack it. It doesn't look quite good because of the order I did it in here, but you get, a, get an idea that the green here is showing the uh, high processing times. i got to change this back. And the, uh, the the red is showing the times that are less than 80%. Anyway, you can move these things around and refine them and get different results. And that's all I wanted to show you was the quick kind of the meta analysis, and clicking on these fields, um, building these simple queries, but also doing the uh, top end values that helps you dig into your data quickly.